situation report on Game Boy. Well, it's been a while, so I figured I'd show my progress. I've been refining things and working on the Game Boy. These are not the original buttons because I decided I like the black Game Boy with the arrows and the but the arrow and the buttons from the original and vice versa. So this gets a charcoal look and this one the print matches the buttons. On the black Game Boy the print is actually the same color as the buttons were on the original. These are swapped. For an audio amplifier, I had some Dell speakers I really love the sound of. And now I know why. Um, yeah, this is a little too big to be putting in there. I'm gonna have to figure something else out for the audio amplifier. But I've done a lot of work in here. Still the same network controller. Here is a USB sound card which is inferior to a good sound card in a PC, but far superior to the one on the Raspberry Pi. And obviously I don't have it hooked up at the moment. The LCD is working just fine. It's behind this maze of labeled wires. I use an old modem unshielded twisted pair cable from a laptop for the signal and ground cables. That seems to be working well. The flicker is noticeably reduced. I don't think I can reduce it any further without um, <laughs> without um, messing up the signal. Er, sorry. I don't think I can reduce it any further without changing from um, composite in. As you may be able to see here, I took the original Game Boy PCB for the controls and did all of the tapping into it with wires and labeling the wires properly for when I take this, which is different than the one I was planning on using. This is an actual Gravis Gamepad Pro USB. The reason? This here. I can actually t uh, replicate all of these support components, uh, either dead bug or on a much smaller PCB, and these are just diodes in order to uh, expand the amount of controls this has. This is a 10 button controller. All digital, sorry, no analog. I don't want analog in this thing. If I want an analog controller, I'll plug one in. For now, I'm leaving the original Game Boy speaker in here. I eventually want to go stereo. I do not think I'm going to have the original ones here and here, but I'm going to try to find some ones out of laptop that sound good. I've been scavenging out some laptops to see what I can do to, as far as that goes. The network jack I've gotten in, but I did a big oopsie on it. As you can see, it's pretty much busted out. I'm going to have to be very, very careful on this with my final version or find a low profile jack. I do want those LEDs to be working on it though. The DC jack, as you see, I have put in properly. The HDMI is where it's supposed to be, a couple of USBs. As you saw in the beginning, there's the USB plugs. They're, they fit perfectly in there. I just haven't done that yet because I've been busy troubleshooting a troublesome SD. Speaking of the SD um, system, I had a whole lot of trouble switching from a very thin magnet wire style wire over to floppy drive cable that was aluminum and stranded. This particular wire is uh, much easier to work with and does not break or short out, but uh, with that comes a lot shorter of uh, signal that I can actually get through it before 
it stops working. I mean, with the Raspberry Pi, if the SD card is not working, you are not even going to get a picture. No activity light in it, or no activity light or anything. The uh, it being this short, it works. And I actually have the SD card. This is the reason I wanted to get the uh, Adafruit uh, SD card adapter because one, it's so small and so easy to solder to. Two, it's got the pop, uh, pop in, pop out. Uh, the original volume area, I can actually just do that and it works very well. I have not figured out what I'm gonna put in the external jack. That will not take a network port because the LE LCD actually gets in its way. However, all in all, things are going quite well. Besides the major problem with the SD card signal length problem. I have it up and running and I'm going to show you in a few moments. Okay, let's try that again. Without the oops, I actually soldered this in backwards. Ugh. Mm, there it goes. I just tacked the USB connection up at the moment. And I'm running a fresh install of uh, Occidentalis that I have not set up at all, so it comes up to the configuration window. The keyboard is a Re Mini. Which <laughs> isn't working. Oh well. I know it works, but anyway, it is, what is done, is working. Okay, as I said a moment ago, it's working, and the problem was I needed to plug in the keyboard again the keyboard adapter again. Here it is. Now. Obviously working. I still have a lot of work to do, but it's definitely coming along. These USB ports that right now are running the charging and the controller for the keyboard will be put here and here. And that will come out where the original game slot was. And look. <laughs> I'm just holding it together and it has the parts just stuffed in there, but yeah. And the soldering iron is even in the way. <laughs> oh well. easily visible that it actually works in the original case. <laughs>